All right, talking points. Take one and action. Take 10. Yeah, it's actually like take 10. Hello everyone. We are Elisa and Jason with EECC Travels and today we're gonna to talk about our first experience with MSC Cruises. Hmm. Mm. Was it good or was it bad? Well, MSC is a very controversial cruise line right now. A lot of <laughs> negativity is out there about them. Yeah. So, so obviously we were curious and we were like, ooh, negativity. Let's dive in. <laughs> so a lot of people have reviewed MSC and said that it was the worst cruise they've ever had, that the food was terrible, that the entertainment was terrible, and just negative, negative, negative about MSC cruises. And not a lot of positivity has come out about them, yet they're one of the fastest growing cruise lines in the world right now. So we were kind of curious on how true these negative reviews were and we know how rumors go so we wanted to go and see for ourselves and that's basically what this video is all about what we liked what we didn't like did we think it was negative or did we think it was good yep also just a quick inform bit of information we talked to a crew member and they said recently msc has changed the way that they are behaving portraying their cruises to the american audience. So when they first came over to the U.S., they still had the European model. So European entertainment, European type food, things like that. They realized that maybe this isn't working and they listened to the feedback and it is more of an American diet. The show that we saw was very like we've seen on other American cruise lines. So I think they've taken some of that negativity, Americanized it, Americanized it fixed it and now what we experienced was more of a positive experience also guys before we get started if you like this video make sure to hit that like button and that subscribe button it really helps us out and we appreciate it thank you so let's break this down into some categories let's talk about the ship itself the overall experience the food the entertainment the private island Let's start with the ship. What did you think about the ship? First impressions. I thought the ship was beautiful. Uh, when we got dropped off over there in Brooklyn, uh, we sailed away from the Brooklyn terminal. That was the first. Interesting. It was, there she was. She was absolutely gorgeous. When we went inside of her, she was equally as beautiful. So, I mean, cosmetically, beautiful ship. Very stunning. Yep. So we were on the MSC Maravilla. I'm not sure if we've said that up yeah. until this point. By the way, <laughs> yeah. kind of a, a key uh, thing. Yeah, they have lots of different ships out there, but we were specifically on the Maravilla. When you see the ship from the beginning, the first impression is, wow, that's a big, beautiful ship. It It's a larger size, so it's got a higher capacity. Um, you can see that it's got water slides and water parks and things like that that families are going to like. Yeah. And just the overall aesthetics of the outside of the ship is a very beautiful ship. Very beautiful. And then on the inside, when we first came in, we come into the atrium lobby. And that one of the first things you see are those beautiful staircases mm -hmm. that have actual crystals, like Swarovski. Am I saying that right? Swarovski? Yeah, the staircase into the stairs. It's beautiful. Look like diamonds, but they're crystals. Mm -hmm. And it's the most sparkly staircase you ever seen. Absolutely beautiful. And then they have a, a big grand piano with the gentleman playing it. It's very grandiose, very beautiful feeling to walk into. Mm -hmm. And then from the atrium, you can see the, the deck or the roof of the promenade. Yeah. So that's something that's unusual that I hadn't seen before, and that is that it's bright, it's, it lights up, it changes. And so first impression on the inside of the ship is, wow, this is, this is swanky, this is beautiful. Yeah, it reminded me of Fremont Street in yeah. Las Vegas, the old part of Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. Now they get the, I don't know what you call it, it's like a jumbotron, but it's not. You know, it's rounded and it gets really uh -huh. long. Um, that's what it looks like. It was nothing we've ever seen before. Absolutely beautiful. Loved it. And it was constantly changing. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. I think every hour they changed it. And it was even neat when we were we had to go to our muster drill that the that the roof looked like the muster stations. Yeah. Okay, one thing that really jumped out at me that I really liked about the pool was the Lido deck. For me, the Lido deck is like the heartbeat of the ship. For some people, it's the promenade or whatever, atrium. For me, it's the, the pool deck. I go and see what the pool deck looks like, and I'm like, all right, everything's going to be all right, or uh, this is not going to be so good. This was awesome. Huge, long pool. I mean, it's the biggest pool I've ever seen on a ship mm -hmm. to date. And it had like this uh, little marble walkway that you could walk in between them that was submerged underwater a little bit, had four statues all around it, it was absolutely stunning. Had these beds lining both sides of it with pads that you could lay on. I felt like there could have been more seating. Um, there was a lot of wasted open space around it, but there was plenty of room. I really liked it. Yeah, so that was a great... That was just one pool. It was. Then they have the bamboo pool, mm -hmm. which is kind of like a solarium situation. But it's not really like... But it's enclosed. It has a big waterfall. It has the... It's not a swim-up bar, but the bar is very close. Nice pool area there. And then it has the one on the aft, um, which is... Yeah, which is a smaller pool. Um, the jogging track goes right through the middle of it, which is <laughs> interesting. Weird. Yeah, that was strange. But three pools. I did like that. Of course, there's never enough hot tubs, right? Yeah. Never, never enough hot tubs. And I think there was, I don't remember how many, but they were small. Yeah, and the pool in the back was adult only, which is nice. That is nice. Not Very... against kids, but it's nice to have yeah. an adult only space sometimes. Right, right for sure. <laughs> but I think we ended up hanging out in the bamboo pool more than any of the pools. Yeah, you know, it was... Just a really nice area. Um, if it was raining, which it rained a couple of times, mm -hmm. they it had a retractable roof. They would just retract it back and the sunlight was coming in. So it's like you're outside, which is like a no-brainer, right? They should have that on every ship, like football stadiums. I think every football stadium should have a retractable roof. Just makes sense. But anyway, that was really a nice area. We spent a lot of our time there. We didn't even get into the pool at the aft. No. Yeah. Now we walked back there and you know hung out, sat in some of the loungers sometimes, but mm -hmm. never got in the pool back there. Yeah, it was a small area back there. It so you had the pool basically, then you had the jogging track, and then you had some loungers on the ground there, and then then it kind of tiered up going up to the topper. Uh, like stadium seating. Yeah, like stadium <laughs> seating, and then there was a little bar up there. I'd never seen it like that on mm -hmm. any other ship. It's real small, compact back there, but I I still enjoyed it. Yeah, I really enjoyed just the overall feel of this ship. Other than Embarkation Day, and we'll get into that a little bit later, but other than Embarkation Day, it never felt overly crowded. Never. So, because there's so many different venues, there's so many different things going on, it helps spread people out. Mm -hmm. For sure. I really liked, what was the, right above the gym, over, it was a Sky Lounge? Or yeah, I don't remember. Called. Let me see. Yeah, the Sky Lounge. It was like a panoramic view mm -hmm. of the Lido deck, and you could see the Jumbotron from far away. And that reminds me, too, to bring up this point, that this ship was the most active ship. Everyone was moving around and Every single morning, I would walk out there mm -hmm. with my coffee, and there's a group doing yoga or stretches or some kind of morning routine. Aerobics. Aerobics. And there was a huge crowd of them. Yep. They'd be on the lower decks. You know, some of them are just concentrated in a little group. These were people in the little groups, up top, on the jogging track, looking down, all over the place. They were all kind of into it and active. I really liked that. I enjoyed that. I thought that was, it was really inspiring. Neat. Yeah, I think that more ships should do that because if, you know, they hold exercise classes in the gym, but put them out by the pool, you know, yeah. where in the multiple sunshine. people have room to, to get out there and do it. That was a great idea. Yeah, that was neat. And that's what made me think of that. We were in the Sky Lounge and I observed that. Mm -hmm. And then when I was at the gym, you could observe that because when you're in the gym, you have a panoramic view looking out to the jogging track, which looked out to the Lido deck. So you had great views everywhere you went in this ship. Yeah, you really did. Which I really liked. That was a big like for me too. Yep. So great outdoor spaces, indoor spaces um, in the evenings. Um, 
the promenade area really comes to life. So you've got the specialty dining restaurants, the main dining rooms are at the back, and then lots of live music venues. Mm -hmm. So I guess let's kind of shift into entertainment. What did you think about the entertainment on the show? Uh, I thought it was okay. You know, nothing great, nothing terrible. Just middle of the road. You know, I felt like it could have been better, honestly. I felt like the shows were, eh, but to each their own. I just kind of drive a hard bargain when it comes to shows. I really have been spoiled by Norwegian shows. They're, to me, have the best shows at sea. Yep. And these fell pretty short from that. I, I just didn't, wasn't, it wasn't the right cast or crew, whatever you want to say it, or I just, it didn't work for me. I totally agree with that. We only went to one stage show and it just felt very generic. It was just, you know, people with kind of cheesy costumes, singing songs that you knew, but there was no originality to it. Was it a bad show? No, I mean, it was entertainment. Um, I won't say it was bad, but it was definitely not high quality. So like, you know, they were all on strings and they were doing what they were controlled <laughs> and told to do. And there was really no emotion in their performance at all. And I think that's what Elise is trying to say. It just, you gotta, you gotta have some emotion in your performance to really make it good. Yep. Other than the stage show, stage show, there was live music around the ship. So I think we spent more time in the pub than anywhere else. And there was a live um, acoustic musician in there. Super nice guy. I really enjoyed him. Played a lot of the songs that we knew. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a musician as well. And so we hit it off and chatted um, music talk but he played a lot of the stuff that I enjoyed to listen to and at least enjoyed listening mm -hmm. to and people that were with us also. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. And the pub was fantastic. It's like a real Irish pub mm -hmm. and they had craft beer that you could get. Uh, I really enjoyed drinking IPAs and I like my beer. And so I really enjoyed that area there. Really kind of took me away for a little while. And let's see, they had other live music too. So we heard like some bands down at the bottom. There was a piano player. So oh, throughout the ship, there was live music kind of everywhere. Yeah, there was live music and it was good stuff. You know, it wasn't, wasn't great, but it was, it was pretty good. Yep, and plenty to do. Um, and karaoke? Oh, karaoke. <laughs> that was fun. So I sang a couple of songs and I enjoyed it. That did not get put on film. Yeah. <laughs> but I had a blast. It was a great venue to do karaoke. It was, the seating was kind of crazy. Though. It was. Like the, that brings me to another point. The furniture is weird. I don't know if they call that European or what, but you know, cause this is a European cruise line, but wow. It was always, it's all the chairs had these super high backs. You'd sit in them like pods and you could turn and swivel, but they were humongous and you couldn't see over them if you sat in the one behind it. Yep. And there was a whole bunch of those. So if you were standing, it was a great venue, but if you were sitting, maybe not so much, but it was, it was a big area. I forget the name of it. It was right there in the promenade. Mm -hmm. Really cool venue though, nonetheless. Except the chairs were a little bit too tall. But I think they only did like one hour of karaoke at a time. So you had to like be Johnny on the spot to get there and sign up for your song. Did you notice, was it just me or was the furniture kind no, of... No, the furniture's weird. <laughs> it's not the most comfortable furniture, you know. It's... I didn't like the furniture. Like the decor. Yeah. The I don't even know why I care so much about that, but it just seemed... I don't know. Well, not... typically you don't even notice the furniture. It should blend in, but this was so kind of over the top, like especially in the champagne bar and in the, the venue where the, I we can't remember the name of the venue where the um, karaoke was, but just the chairs were very strange in there. <laughs> yeah. Like real futuristic and stuff yeah. like feeling. And when you sit in them, they weren't really that comfortable. <laughs> but anyway, enough about the furniture. <laughs> One big item of debate with MSC is the food. This is where so many people have said the food was inedible. I starved on my cruise. Nothing was good but the pizza. Pizza's awesome, by the way. But overall, how did you feel the food well, was on this a, cruise? That's a big debate on all cruises, honestly. It is. Okay, the food was okay. I don't think it was that good. I felt like the buffet food 
tasted fine, but it was like every single day, it looked like the same stuff. Meaning they would have, you know, one little thing of pasta, like with tomato sauce and penne pasta. And then the next day it would be tomato sauce and bow tie pasta. <laughs> and then the next day it would be tomato sauce and another kind of pasta. And then all these stews, like I've never seen so much stew in all my life. And I like stew once, but every day they had this stuff that was real stewy with beef or some kind of protein stewed down. Everything felt like it was this, you're eating the same thing every single day. And it tasted fine, but I, there wasn't enough choices for me. Yeah, I think overall we were very happy with the flavors of things. The flavors were good. It was seasoned well, so you didn't have to add, I don't think we ever really had to add salt no, or pepper the, the to seasoning, anything. The seasoning, the taste was fine, mm -hmm. but it was just not enough um, variety. Variety. The pizza though, you The pizza's the bomb, oh my God. It's the best. The best pizza at sea, hands down. No <sighs> argument, it's yep. awesome. Close shop, <laughs> head on home, because <laughs> you're not gonna beat it, y'all. It's good pizza. And people were, they knew it. There was always people getting the pizza, but there was never any lines. So, you know, they were slapping them pizzas out so fast. They it were. didn't, it, you know, it didn't stop the flow. Right. But, but they, it was in a really big area. So when you first walked mm -hmm. into the buffet, area. the buffet area, and I forget, cause we were just on another ship. It was called the marketplace, the carnival ship. I forget the name of that particular buffet, but it's really doesn't matter. You walk in, it was a huge space, and that's where the pizza was. So it never got clogged up. Yep. So the pizza is served pretty much all day long until I think one or two in the morning. So that station is always going. Even if the buffet shuts down for in-between meals, that pizza station is open. Also, during evening, like dinner, I guess, there's pizza in the back. So you, you can get pizza in a couple of different places. And they, they change the variety of the pizza as well. So sometimes they'll have, you know, pep, pepperoni. Sometimes they'll have um, sausage pizza. They change it up Mushroom. so it's not the same thing all the time. Yeah. Now, we never asked for our own pie or anything like that because the slices were pretty good size. And we just didn't feel the need to. I don't know if you can do that. I know, like, on carnival ships, you can always say, Hey, let me get the whole pie and they'll do it for you. Chances are they'll do it on that. But these were... Pretty good. Big pizzas, big like pizzas. New York size pizzas. Yeah, so you didn't really feel like you needed a whole pie. Yeah. But good slices, you could fold up in little taco pizzas and slam them down. Every single one of them were delicious. Yes. And it was fun because we tried different things. Like I'm one of those that likes sauce on my pizza, but found out that the no sauce four cheese pizza was that. freaking delicious. Yeah, she liked that. I like I like my pizza to be wet with sauce, but not too much sauce to where when you take a bite, all the toppings slide <laughs> off at one time. I hate that. I like that good, happy medium. But the only problem with the pizza was it was so good, you ate it every single night. That is true. So you'd eat the regular buffet and be like, I'm not going to eat the pizza tonight. And, and then you'd go eat the pizza. And you'd go eat the pizza. So you ate the other stuff on the buffet and then wash it down with pizza. Yep. Yeah. So get ready to gain some weight on that cruise. Can you tell we like the pizza? We really like the pizza. Enough about the pizza. Okay. So we are big buffet people. We like it because it's quick and it's, it's easy. You get in and you get out and you're not spending all day eating. But we did try some of the other foods. So we ate in the main dining room once. Um, the service is quick. That's mm -hmm. one thing that we complain about about main dining room is that it takes too long. Mm -hmm. But we were in and out of there in about an hour and 10 minutes. And thank goodness we were sitting next to our travel buddies and friends. They were right next to us. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it would have felt like you were at the same table eating with somebody. Because the tables, y'all, are so close to each other. They are. So, yeah. I didn't like that. We were at a table for two, and our friends were at a table for two, but we felt like we were at one table. Like, you can't... How can you even have a conversation? You're going to hear everybody's conversation yeah. around you. It's just kind of wonky to me. Anyway, but we knew the people next to us, so it was all good. <laughs> yeah. And the food was good in the main dining room. I mean, it didn't like blow us away or anything, but it was good food. Yeah. You know, it's, it was on the better side of cruise food. Yeah. Um, let's see. Ocean K. Oh yeah. We went there. I had the ahi tuna. I felt like it was overcooked. I didn't care for that. I think if it came out a little bit more medium rare, I think that's how you should eat ahi tuna anyway, but that's just me. I think it would have been better. A little flavorless. Felt like the flavors weren't really that great on that particular fish. 
but mine was really good. And Jason tried a bite of mine and he agreed my fish was better. Because yep. I like the white flaky fish and just the way they prepared it, it was really, really good. Yep. Um, and chances are next time the ahi tuna will come out tasting good. It's hit and miss. You never know. You know, it just depends on yes. the day. And how busy the chef is and yada, you know, yada, how yada. They're, yeah, so many factors. <laughs> we also had the teppanyaki. And what's cool is the teppanyaki is also open for lunch. So we were not sure what we wanted to do as far as dining reservations. We yeah. waited too long. All the evening teppanyaki was gone, but we were able to get in for lunch. Same menu, same everything. Yeah. And the food was really good. Yep. Yeah. I missed the dipping sauces that we would get. <laughs> Usually you get the little white dipping sauce Norwegian, and then like the, the little dipping. mustardy, yeah, the Norwegian. I missed that. We did not have that, but we got so many other things that we got to pick from and that really made that experience even better. Right. Kind of elevated it. Yeah, and sushi was included because that's something you <laughs> it was usually so don't much food. get. Yeah, you got a whole plate of sushi mm -hmm. and sashimi. Then we had the miso soup, which was really good miso soup. Some of the best I had. It is, yeah. And God, the rice. I love fried rice. You know, I mean, even if you're on a low carb diet, if you're just super hardcore diet person, you're gonna eat the rice. It's you so know, good. if you don't eat the rice, somebody needs to <laughs> slap you because it's so good. So they filled our whole bowl up, like literally packed it in there and then scraped off the top. I think I ate the whole thing with chopsticks. Yeah. It's an experience, y'all, to eat that rice. <laughs> oh, teppanyaki is one of our favorites on cruise ships because we know it's going to be good food. I mean, you watch them cook it right in front of you. We didn't get the anamame there, though. I don't no, know. I don't remember. No, I don't think we got the anamame, which is the little green beans that are in the little sleeve. <laughs> mm, those are so good. And they got seasonings over all the top of it. Mm, so good. Love those things. Anyway. But overall, our food experience on MSC was way better than we were expecting. Yep. So would we do thumbs down, do thumbs sideways or thumbs up? I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to give it a thumbs up. Just for we'll the go, pizza. We're going to go about right here. <laughs> the pizza might bump it up a little yeah. bit more, but you know what I'm saying. It's somewhere around that area. Mm -hmm. But that's going to depend on you and your palate and what you're likes and dislikes are when it comes to food. But this is just our personal experience. Okay, well, uh, Ocean K, their private island. So we've been to- It's beautiful. We've been to every private island in the Bahamas except for Princess Key. So mm -hmm. we've been to most of them and we really enjoyed this. And I will tell you one thing that was very nice about it is that you dock right on the island and it's the only ship in port at the time. That was nice. It was not a big island, not small. One ship, that's it. Kind of felt, the island felt castaway-ish. It, was, it wasn't it was busy at all. Mm -hmm. um, which, if you don't like to be around a lot of people, this is ideal. One ship at this Ocean K. But some of the bluest water we've ever seen. Oh, I just love the water in the Bahamas. It's so beautiful. They had the North Beach, which was really, that was the end we were at mm -hmm. in our little cabanas. Had a wonderful day there. You know, had typical like food trucks with cruise food there, hamburgers and hot dogs. Great little hamburger. Yeah, yeah. The fries were good. huge and beefy. The fries were great. Uh huh. And you know, got the job done. No complaints at all. They had another pavilion that you could get food at as well. They had a buffet, but it was it was kind a little far away. further away than where we wanted to be. So we don't have any experience with that. Can't mm -hmm. really tell you about that. But all the food trucks scattered out at the north end and the southern end throughout the uh, island. Those are all the same, same menu. That was good. What I think gives Ocean K an edge is they are the only island, only cruise line that has late nights. Oh, yeah. And some sailings, you can actually get an overnight at Ocean K. No, nobody else does this. Why not? This is genius. Having no time constraints, getting back on the ship whenever you want. We actually got on the ship, had a shower, went and had dinner, and then got back off to watch the lighthouse show. I thought that was fabulous. So they illuminate the lighthouse and it just all starts glowing. It dances around to the music. And it only lasts five minutes. It's very short, but they keep it illuminated after the music's mm -hmm. done. And then they have... Uh, a little beach tiki hut, hut bar thing on, right there on the beach mm -hmm. and they have fire pits and they have fires in them going. So you're on the beach at night. They're doing 
dances yeah. and all kind of stuff. They got staff there kind of like hosting it. Mm -hmm. uh, you can sit around the fire and just look at the ship, but you're at night. This is all at night. That is super neat and unique. I love that. That was the first time we'd ever got to experience that. We didn't actually get out there on the beach and, mm -hmm. and do that, but we, we did get off the ship and stayed kind of on the pier or on the dock next to the ship and watched it all from afar. We were a little tired, spent a lot of time in the sun that day. <laughs> But the next time we'll venture out there for sure. But it looks really fun. Yeah. I just love that. I think it's something different, something new. And they were rocking the music out. People yeah. were dancing and watching the hanging out by the fire. It was cool. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that was a big thumbs up for Ocean K. Big thumbs up. This is going to be not, this next point is not specifically to Maravilla, but for MSC as a whole. And that's that they loyalty match. So before you yeah. go on your first cruise, if you have loyalty with another cruise line, you just fill out an online form. You have to show proof of your loyalty and then they will loyalty match. So our first cruise with MSC, we were their third tier or gold tier loyalty. So I thought that was awesome. That's so, super awesome. Yes. <laughs> I mean... Because cruise lines within the same family don't even uh, loyalty match. So like if you're, crew, if you're a Carnival cruiser and you go on a Princess cruise, you're not going to get your loyalty match from Carnival. But MSC will match any cruise line's loyalty program. And I think that's awesome. Yeah, so that was nice. Found that out. And of course, we went and got our, we matched our loyalty. And then boom, gold cards. Yep. We were flashing them all over. You know? <laughs> yeah. Like we've been doing, we've been on these MSCs forever, but we haven't. It's kind of cool. I think that's really neat. Yep. The last point that we're going to have about this, and this is going to be specifically for Brooklyn and boarding. So getting on and off the ship was a mess. Ooh. The lines were horrendous. And I don't know if this is an MSC issue or if this is a Brooklyn issue, but the lines were very long getting off. They were, I mean, getting on. It took us almost an hour to board the ship and they were very long getting off as well. 100%. I really don't have a whole lot to add to that. It was not Other fun. than it sucked. It sucked. It's just nobody wants to stand in line like that. And it was zigzaggy. You'd turn one corner and it would snake. Yes. You know, like lines at security in an airport. That's what it felt like. Yeah. It was not a good experience. And that's how we started our cruise with this yeah. really long line. And then we get on the ship. We're hungry. We go to the buffet. And so did the 4,000 other people go to the buffet. And it was, we couldn't find seats. By the time we got our food and got a seat, our food was cold. It was just a hot mess getting on that ship. Yeah, so... If you haven't seen our boarding video, go back and watch that. You'll kind of see our frustration on our face kind of in the beginning of the video because of that. that that's why. But you give it time and we kind of... Uh, of course, our first mistake was going to the buffet on that ship. But usually we do that's that every we time. Do. And it's really not an issue. Yeah. Some people are like, well, that was your first mistake. And you got a point. We could have went to like an MDR or something. But after the craziness of getting on board, finally getting something to eat we calmed down and ended up having a good cruise. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Well, that's so, a wrap. Yeah, that's a wrap. I always love trying new things, mm -hmm. especially new cruise lines. It's always interesting to kind of have a comparison afterwards. I would definitely cruise MSC again. Yes. Really like that. What is it? The seashore, the seaside? Yeah, the different shapes. Seascape. It's one of the, I don't know, one of the three. <laughs> Anyway, you know how them cruise names are, but they some they have some beautiful ships. We mm -hmm. definitely plan on cruising them some more. We are not done with them yet. No. Nope. So leave us a comment down below. Have you cruised MSC? What did you think? Did you have a good experience, a bad experience? Yeah. Will you cruise them again? Did you like the food? Did you not like the food? Did you like the furniture? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we want to hear from you. Yeah. Anyway, guys, appreciate you watching. Again, if you're new to this channel, make sure to hit that like button and hit that subscribe button. It definitely helps us out and we appreciate it. So until next time, happy cruising. Happy cruising. Bye. Bye.